There is a word in the English language that is very, very seldom used. The word is aluminizing. And aluminizing is a process of coating a layer of aluminium onto something. One of the uh, kind of secret rituals attached to a big telescope that not many people know about is the recoating of a telescope's mirror. And it actually happens at pretty well all the observatories in the world. And it's something that usually escapes people's attention altogether, but it is vitally important to the well-being of the telescope. We reilluminize roughly once a year. Uh, the main reason for illuminizing is purely because the mirror gets very dirty and there is no way of easily cleaning it in the telescope. Things have been walking on it in the last year. Uh, one of the actions, you know, birds or bats or something poo on the mirror and that actually strips bits off. While the mirror has never been touched, it still gets rather dirty. The process of illuminizing, in summary, uh, several stages mechanically, you obviously have to pull apart the telescope. To remove the mirror from the telescope, it's not just a question of undoing four bolts and the mirror falls out. Uh, it's quite a complex process and in fact one of the key things is that the telescope itself is very finely balanced. It's got pivots which allow it to move uh, to track around the sky and so uh, what you have to do is make sure that the telescope is firmly fixed in position. We also take the top end off the telescope, it's the uh, dismountable bit that allows us to change uh, the focus of the telescope. So you take that off to remove some of the weight on the top of the telescope, lock the telescope in position and then begin removing things at the, the lower end of the telescope. So you start with uh, actually an excess cage, it's called the Cassegrain cage. Uh, and then uh, a lot of ancillary equipment, instruments which might be mounted at the Cassegrain focus of the telescope. All the cables that connect everything have to come off, network everything in the cascade. There are so many connections, there's so much to do. Uh, and then the mirror cell itself is lowered down. It's on, a, on a, a jack arrangement that lowers it down to the dome level onto some rails which guide it uh, out from underneath the telescope to a place where the crane can actually pick up the mirror from inside its cell. The mirror itself this 16 ton piece of glass ceramic material is very, very precious. It's the most important thing in the entire observatory. You might say it's the most important thing on the entire mountain top, apart from the humans who work there. Uh, if you're uh, dangling it on the end of a cable from a crane, which uh, actually means quite a long cable because it stretches down from the top of the dome right down to the second floor, there's the possibility that if you move it too quickly, the mirror will swing. And once you've set up a swinging mirror, it's very difficult to stop it and to control where the mirror is. Uh, there is a relatively small hole through which the mirror has to be passed to get down from the dome area to the second floor where the illuminizing facility is. And the last thing you would want would be the mirror to hit the side of that hole. Work 
work then goes on down on the second floor, clearing off the uh, old coating. So typically you'll just measure the reflectivity because it came out of the telescope, see how good or bad it had been, how dirty the mirror is. The efficiency of a mirror, the reflective efficiency, is measured by something we call reflectance, which is a percentage. What it means is that it's the number of photons that are reflected out of every hundred photons, particles of light, that fall on the mirror surface. There was only one at 84. And that was at the other end? The, the clean end, uh, and only one spot. For the majority, it's around 75. It's then washed to get all the bugs and dirt and things that have fallen on the mirror off. You check the mirror reflectivity again, the reflectivity is usually not down all that much, it's mostly dirt and extra scattering that comes off that is the biggest problem. So once you've cleaned it, remeasured it, you then strip the old coating off, caustic soda, uh, that process takes a few minutes. You see it here where it's starting to come off. You then have to begin the process of then getting it ready to put the new coating on. So there's a lot of work involved in making sure the actual surface of the servit is scrupulously clean. You start off with a soap solution, this is Kodak Photoflow. Then Bolter's number one, this is a, uh, a liquid that's applied to the surface which then dries. Um, the intention of that is that anything that remains on the mirror will become bonded to this solution and then be removed when you polish it off. So it's a, a slow process. You have to rub all the loose stuff off, make sure there's no other bits left and then polish harder and harder until you've removed all traces of that film. You then apply what's called bolts number two, which is more or less isopropyl alcohol. Check that it's then clean. We then we do what we call a breath test. Breathe on it, the mirror will get a, a slight sheen of your breath condensing on it. If you can see any trace patterns or anything in it, it means you haven't done a good job of cleaning. There's a couple of hours involved in the cleaning, a couple of hours involved in getting it picked up, put into the chamber, so the very final stage before it is coated, once it's upright in the chamber lid, you then have to paint it with this little two inch wide anti-static paintbrush. See the dust just falling off of it, dripping off. Uh, and then as soon as you can, before more dust gets a chance to go on there, you close it up and illuminize. To illuminize the mirror, uh, it has to be placed in a gigantic tin box, which we call the aluminizing tank. Uh, and the air is all pumped out of that, and the aluminium gives the mirror a very thin coating. Uh, the actual uh, aluminizing, once it's in the chamber, uh, you start roughing it down to remove most of the air. <laughs> So there's an ion bombardment done to the mirror surface to try and force the uh, remaining molecules off. So for about 15 minutes you bombard this lovely purple glow in the chamber, you've basically created a nice big fluorescent light. There are, for the AAT mirror, 96 little tungsten filaments. Each one has six little tiny coils of wire, three grams per little coil, six of those on each one. So the illuminizing isn't done bang over and done with, it's a, a couple of minutes to do. So you have to first slowly heat up the tungsten filaments. Tungsten has this wonderful property that it will wet the aluminium so that when the aluminium melts it doesn't just fall off, it will actually wick onto this tungsten filaments 
and the aluminium then evaporates onto the surface. And the whole point of a vacuum in the chamber is, of course, that the uh, aluminium vapour now is going to travel in a straight line. It's not going to bump into any air molecules. So the, there's a direct path from the tungsten filaments to the soon-to-be-aluminised mirror surface. Come back a little bit. I think that's done. One way of thinking about this mirror surface is if you imagine it not being 4 metres or 3.9 metres in diameter, but imagine it expanded to the size of New South Wales, then first of all its smoothness would be such that the biggest error, the biggest inaccuracy in its surface would be about the size of a pencil laid on its side. The layer of aluminium uh, that is on, on the mirror surface is itself only a matter of 20 millimetres thick on that scale. So it's about a hundred atoms in reality, but imagining the mirror blown up to the size of the state, then it's a layer perhaps 20 millimetres thick. And then you just reverse the process, put everything back together again. The heart of the telescope is the mirror, the main mirror that collects and focuses the light from distant stars and galaxies. And without that, the telescope wouldn't function, and without the mirror, the observatory would not have any reason to be where it is.